Hiya. A few weeks ago, I showed off a two-chip airlock. Um, I've got that down to one chip. So first, let's look at the uh, test stand just to show us what we're dealing with here. Um, we have a big um, gas tank out here to simulate uh, a room uh, that's hooked up into a two-cell room just to, you know, simulate a room. That's just to pull the nitrogen out of here because I filled it up with ice. And we've got two airlock doors, the actual airlock doors. But you can use uh, any door that has a, um, a panel on it. So the uh, hangar doors and the blast doors don't work, although I am planning on uh, trying to change this so they will work. The problem is that you would need uh, buttons to make that work, and that would mean that you'd uh, with how it's set up right now, you'd need chips and shit like that. So we're not going to... Uh, this is just the basic functionality. Okay. We go into the airlock, and I'm going to show off the code a little bit in a second. And let's just cycle through. And there, that's the basics, no frill cycling, uh, going from one side to the other. <clears throat> so in here we've got uh, cold nitrogen and oxygen, mostly nitro uh, mostly oxygen, I mean. Um, now we will go the other way, but we're a little flaky, so we're going to go... Oh no, I forgot to put my uh, spacesuit on. And it will uh, back the cycle up and go back inside. But let's say, oh no, I forgot to put my spacesuit on, and I need to get in there right goddamn now. You can click once, and that changes it to go in, but we don't want to wait. So we click it again, and it'll explosively open up the doors. So let's cycle back again. We'll go outside. And it does take a bit of time because we are moving one megapascal of um, atmosphere right now. So uh, normally this would be around 100 uh, megapascals on most planetoids and 200 if you're on Venus. Okay, now we're filling up with exterior air, but we don't want to do that. We want to go back out here. Now, unfortunately, you have to wait for the external air to completely empty out before it will let you cycle in. This way, um, I wanted to make sure that there was no accidental contamination. So let's cycle this way again. And of course, uh, now that we're cycling this way, uh, no matter what we do over here, if we click on this again, it's not going to cycle past. It's just going to go through its normal... Um, it's normal routine because we're already going that way. And we've saved up to external air here. So let's pull out our laptop and we will grab the chip. And you can use all the controls. Uh, even with the uh, even with the uh, the system set up, it's not like the standard um, airlock thing. The only thing that doesn't work are the the doors, and that's because of the way the doors function um, in this mode. I can't force it to accept input from the doors uh, once the chip is turned off or pulled out. Now, uh, we'd ha I'd have to have a button or something, and I might add a button in later. So uh, the, some of the options we got is safe room. That means stop if uh, the room is filled with internal air. So we will set that for now, internal air. Uh, stop if we're in a vacuum. Stop if we're in a vacuum. So these two are for um, if you're working outside and you want to get into the airlock to eat or drink or something, but you don't want to open the inner doors, uh, you can do that. Uh, and, and you can also set the internal pressure to be 
um, the lowest level uh, that's suitable for um, uh, taking off your helmet, but not all the way up to your internal pressure. You'll still have a little bit of an explosive uh, recompression if it's, if it's too far beyond the internal pressure. <clears throat> Vacuum, uh, I have that in case you want to um, bleed out a canister or something. I thought it was just a good option to have. It's something that I'd want, so I put it in there. Um, the internal pressure is whatever you expect your internal pressure to be. Right now it's at one megapascal, and as you can see, once the airlock fills up, the um, the test chamber is no longer at one megapascal. It's about at eight some, something or nine. Um, and um, if it's above or below, the vent doesn't care. It's just going to um, pressurize the airlock until it's it's uh, it's matching to this number. If you put zero, that's explosive recompression. The outer doors will open, blow you in the face. That's done. Um, exterior pressure, same thing, except for it's the external side. And again, it can be anything. Uh, the fastest is if these two, if all of these options are set to zero, so it'll drain the uh, airlock. And then as soon as the airlock is finished draining, it's just going to open the doors and uh, blast whatever side you're on into your face. Uh, and we can actually set... I'll show these functions first. So we'll write that. Okay. So, now that we have this option... Uh, I should turn the ship back on. Now we're in a vacuum, and we can do whatever we we're going to do in this vacuum. And then we can go back outside if need be. And we'll just turn around and go back inside. And again, this will take a long time because we've set the internal pressure to uh, one megapascal. And that's just to show that this airlock will handle um, very large pressures. So if you're going to pressurize a room to one megapascal and have Stirling engines in there, just so you have a lot of mass for your Stirling engines to bleed off into, you can do that. Uh, later on, I will hopefully upgrade this setup so it'll it'll be able to use blast doors and you can have any pressure you want. But at this point, uh, one megapascal difference is the limit. There. And now we're inside. So let's take out our um, computer. And we will set everything to do everything as quickly as possible. I don't really care what the consequences are. We'll set everything down to zero. We will write that. And if I had more inputs, I would absolutely have that set to a knob or something. So you wouldn't have to write anything into the, into the program. So now what this is going to do is it's just going to try to get us outside as quickly as possible. And there, we've explosively recompressed, and we're outside. And we'll go back inside. And there we go. There is... Um, I will be designing a companion chip for... Uh, for this chip so that you can use the airlock for other things to uh, maintain a, um, a desired pressure and if, and if uh, pressure starts to start to drop it will uh, seal off the airlock so one side doesn't leak out to the other. If it detects gas that it doesn't like it, that you set that you don't want to have anything uh, that you don't want present in your um, uh, in your base it'll close both sides off um, anything you want, um, but that's going to be uh, further into the future. There we go. And I will probably also set up something uh, to allow you to um, um, take the modes off so you can actually use these like a little bit better. Here we are in the vacuum test bed.
and we uh, have the old code sitting in here for the um, for the two chip setup. We'll just turn those off, and I will copy in the code, and we'll set this to all zeros once again, just so we can get the fastest time. Oh, and I do have to set up the uh, the devices, so we'll have the airlock internal door. Airlock external. Active vent internal. Active vent external. Gas sensor, and then nothing on number five. So that's set up. We'll turn it back on. There. And now we will go into the base and we have explosive recompression and it was just that fast to get back through we're back inside the base and we'll leave and as you can see there is no um, console here uh, a tiny bit has uh, a tiny bit of atmosphere has escaped uh, just by virtue that this the sensor rounds, so uh, it will it will explosively open the door um, at like a um, hundred or thirty pascals or something. I don't exactly remember how how uh, how much is that, but that's why there was a little bit of a leak. Uh, and to uh, avoid that leak, you just have to set the uh, set the parameters more correctly. So here we'll set it up to a typical setting, just to show that this is working. There we go. And we'll go the other way. We're in a safe room. Open the door. We can go back out into the base. Then we'll Get back to a vacuum room. Oh, sorry, that safe room first, and then vacuum room. And we'll open the outside air. And that's it. Uh, I'm probably going to be putting this on the, the workshop very soon. Um, it seems to be uh, done. It doesn't seem like I need to do anything more to it. And thank you for looking at my script.